Hello everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese cruiser line. This is the Tier 4 Kuma class of cruiser. The Kuma class cruisers were a class of five completed cruisers built between 1917 and 1920. The five ships are Kuma, Tama, Kitakami, Ui, and Kiso. The Kuma class cruisers were designed to compete with the U.S. Navy's Omaha class light cruisers, in addition to providing a backbone to the submarine and destroyer fleets. The specifications called for a ship with 5,500-ton displacement, high freeboard, and a light bridge structure to carry heavier armament than the preceding Tenryu class ships, with only a small loss in overall speed. Later in the war, the development of the Type 93 Long Lance torpedoes and the desire to have extremely high night fighting capability meant that plans were drawn up to convert the Kuma class cruisers into torpedo cruisers. In fact, two, Kitakami and OE, were converted and carried 40 Type 93 Long Lance torpedoes in 10 quad launchers, five on each side. A third, Kiso, was planned as well to be converted, but the lack of the Type 92 quad torpedo mounts meant that Kiso was never actually converted into a torpedo ship. In terms of service history of the five ships, only one survived the war, that was Kitakami, but not in her torpedo cruiser configuration, which she is certainly most famous for. These ships underwent numerous refits of varying forms, including the famous Kitakami OE torpedo cruiser conversion, as well as fast transports, light AA cruiser modifications, and the removal of 14 centimeter guns for 12.7 meter, 7, 12 .7 centimeter guns, and so on. Kuma assisted in landing troops during the Japanese intervention in Siberia to fight the Bolshevik Red Army in Russia, but during World War II, she assisted in the landing of troops in the Philippines and provided cover for several months in the area before being reassigned to the Southwest Area Fleet, where she would remain until she was torpedoed by the British submarine HMS Tallyho. Tama participated in the Aleutian Islands campaign and the Battle of Komandorsky Island. She would go on to fight in the Battle of Leyte Gulf and would be sunk by the USS Jalau on Jalau's first war patrol. Also, Tama is distinctly not a cat either. Yeah. Kitakami and Ui both served through World War II in various forms, ranging from a true torpedo cruiser to a fast transport, making runs to truck in the Caroline Islands and the Shortland Island in the Solomons. Kitakami would be severely damaged by aircraft and would be again refit into a Kai-10, or human torpedo, carrier. She was able to carry eight of these human torpedoes, but never actually use them in combat. Later on, she'd be used as an anti-aircraft barge in Kure until the war ended, in which she was used as a repair ship until scrapped in 1946. Oe participated in the Battle of Midway as part of the Aleutian Island Screening Force before being turned into a fast transport. She would be sunk by the USS sub the U.S. submarine Flasher, just west of Manila in 1944. Kiso spent the early war period in the Aleutian Islands and northern waters on patrol there. Later in the war, she would be used as a fast transport for troops, much like Oe and Kitakami was. She fought in and survived the Battle of Leyte Gulf, but would later be sunk by U.S. carrier-based aircraft just west of Manila in 1944. In terms of their in-game play style, Kuma is an absolute blast to play. She has really strong guns with good rate of fire, fantastic arcs on those guns, both in terms of shell trajectory as well as firing arcs. And she has really use good and usable torpedoes with quite frankly, excellent angles. She is a really solid uh, torpedo cruiser in the fact that you can actually charge torp with her. That, it, it's a lot of fun to play. I, I, I can't say enough about it. Her overall handling is acceptable for a Tier 4 cruiser, but her armor feels more fragile than other Tier 4 cruisers, except for possibly Danae in the Royal Navy cruiser line. Her AA might, not as, might as well not exist, uh, quite frankly, these ships never carried a real AA complement until way late in World War II, so that seems to be a pretty good throwback to that. Kuma is also the first Japanese cruiser to gain hydroacoustic search, as well as a seaplane fighter, which kind of makes her unique at this tier. 
owing in part again to her real life, uh, you know, carrying those things in real life. As far as tier four cruisers go, Kuma is a close second in my books to Phoenix as my favorite tier four cruiser. Let's talk about stats. She has 24,200 hit points, 65 millimeters of armor, and you can see here that much like Tenryu, she has a massive citadel that is really not well protected. Uh, in fact, you know, 140 millimeter guns and above are basically going to shred this front end and penetrate quite cleanly into the citadel, which just makes this ship a little bit more fragile than other tier four cruisers, as I mentioned before. She has a main battery that consists of seven 140 millimeter guns. They are in a really rather unique configuration. You have two guns up front, you have two wing turrets, and then you have two more out back. This basically means that she can only... Oh, sorry, three guns out back. I missed the one in the middle here. Uh, that means she can only bring six of those guns to bear, but thanks to very, very favorable angles, uh, they you can engage while maintaining the right angle to bounce most AP shells coming in that actually hit your belt. Of course, anything that hits this front bow section is most likely to citadel the ship, so it's kind of a dangerous game to play, but you can play it. They have a 12.8 kilometer firing range, 12% fire chance, 6 second reload, and a relatively fast 180 degree turn time of 19.6 seconds. Her AP is also nothing to sneeze at at 2700 damage in a shell, and both have an 850 meters per second uh, velocity, which is very, very comfortable and very easy to get used to. She also carries torpedoes. She carries a total of 8 they are going to be in four dual launchers. You've got two per side, so a total of four per side. Again, they have a really good firing arcs. I can't stress that enough. They have a seven kilometer range, 57 knot speed, 10,833 damage, and a 42 second uh, reload time. So very usable torpedoes. Unfortunately, the battle video doesn't really show them being used a whole lot aside from area denial, but... Um, that's the discussion for the battle video. In terms of uh, anti-aircraft defense, she has uh, two of these 13 millimeter guns as well as six dual 25 millimeters. Again, this might as well not even exist. In terms of max speed, 34 and a half knots, 640 meter turning circle radius, 5.4 second rudder shift time, making her quite maneuverable. Detection range by sea, 11 kilometers. Detection range by air, 6.5 kilometers. Let's talk about some upgrades. Main Armaments Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedoes becoming incapacitated, as well as increasing their hit point pool by 50% and decreasing the time it takes to repair them by 20%. At, at, this, at this tier especially, I don't see any reason to take anything other than Main Armaments Mod, mod 1. Uh, simply put, we don't have enough secondaries. Actually, we don't have any secondaries. And our AA guns on this might as well not even exist. So Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 is not particularly useful. Magazine Mod 1. Yeah, I I just I think Main Armaments Mod 1 is just a stronger overall module than Main Armaments Mod 1. In the second slot, I definitely recommend Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in your chance of your engines being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. A good case can be made for Steering Gears Mod 1, which is the same thing except for, for your steering gears. And of these two... I know I've said it before, personally, I find losing my propulsion system to be far more damaging in the long run than losing my steering, simply because I can still angle myself. It might just take me forever to get there. If my steering gears get taken out, it's hard to run away when you have zero propulsion. And with these cruisers, I'm not running last stand, so um, neither one of these uh, are really going to help out in those cases when they get, or sorry, neither the engine or the rudder are going to help out a whole lot, um, you know, when you get, when they get taken out. So it's not like you can crawl away at reduced speed. Damage control systems mod one on a cruiser, really not a fan of that. Also, let's talk about those consumables real quick. I already mentioned they do have hydroacoustic search. It does have a 3.48 kilometer ship detection range, two and a half kilometer torpedo detection range, 90 seconds, uh, activate, it's active for 90 seconds and a reload time of 120 seconds. She does have a catapult fighter as well. Um, I'm assuming this is to make up for the fact that she has zero AA. <laughs> um, 
I, I don't know. It's more useful for scouting things than it is for anything else, and it's active for 360 seconds or six minutes, which is quite useful. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's Kuma. Let's dive into a battle video. All right, so this is going to be a Tier 4 fight on the map Ring. It's basically an entire Tier 4 map. They have two St. Louis, and we have a Friant and a Wakatake for our Tier 3s. This map is actually a lot of fun. as one of the newer maps for this tier. Uh, definitely has some throwbacks of some of the other really good maps. It's a fairly large map at Tier 4, but it's definitely not the largest map. If I remember correctly, that honor goes to another. I believe it's a, a big race, I think, is actually the, the bigger map on this one uh, for this tier range. And... I think this map is quite good. It, it promotes a lot of really good engagements in the middle area of the map without, you know, creating these massive open spaces where it's impossible for you to, you know, close the distance. We've got a lot of hard cover, some pretty tall mountains, but just enough that you can hide behind and shoot at things. And that's what we're going to do for the first part of this battle. Uh, it, not usually a tactic I take in, in cruisers. Uh, there's a couple of them that I do. Atlanta, Cleveland, most of the U.S. cruisers are that way. Low-tier Japanese cruisers definitely seem to... I, I want to say favor that play style because they're relatively soft. And that's going to change as, as, thankfully, is going to change as we go higher and higher in the cruisers. They tend to get a little bit more durable and a, not necessarily more maneuverable, but their armor gets more trollish. And the fact that it becomes harder and harder to citadel them. But uh, you can see here we've got pretty good gun angles here. If I can go back to showing that. Okay, so we're going to show those gun angles, and, and that's basically it. A little bit more. And you get that rear gun involved there, but uh, very good angles for the guns. And again, a high, relatively high fire chance, 12% with a, uh, you know, six second reload. You've got six guns that are firing. Generally speaking, you start fires quite frequently. Not quite as good as Tenryu, though. So we are, again, charging up towards this middle here because this is kind of where our islands are at. I originally thought about possibly going to the north of this island and then decided, no, we're going to stay down here in the south and do the best that we can to create a delaying action. We're going to go ahead and launch our scout plane up. And by scout plane, I mean fighter plane, because the six-minute flight time that it has is actually a really good spotter aircraft. Uh, doesn't have the spotting aircraft capabilities in terms of, you know, changing your angle and, and giving you more range, but it definitely gives you a much, much, much clearer picture of what's over these mountains when you don't have friendly ship spotting for you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slow down here so that we've got ourselves some hard cover between us and other things. Now, I can shoot over these islands. That means just about any of these other cruisers can as well. So that means we definitely need to be paying attention, especially to what's off to our right-hand side. Uh, we don't want any surprise battleship problems because battleships will destroy the ship fairly easily if they're well played. We got ourselves a Duguay here that we are going to shoot at and hopefully sink sometime soon. But he disappears. Aha! But not before I start him on fire. Ah, yes, the evil napalm-laced shells definitely showing their strengths. So the St. Louis is probably... Oh, another fire. Probably the close... Wow, 2K in damage. It's probably the closest analog that uh, some of these lower-tier ships have, the lower-tier Japanese ships have to, um, uh, you know, their, their U.S. counterparts. Like, for instance, the Phoenix, while a fantastic ship, it does not have nearly the flexibility at times. It's a little less forgiving of being aggressive than Kuma is. And it's, I don't think its fire chance is nearly as strong. But, hey, look, we're up to three fires, and that poor St. Louis had already burned his damage control party, and, well, I don't feel bad. Not one bit. Oop. Got hit there by the Duguay, but no damage. Oh, wait, no, he did 200 damage. Ah, oh, what a jerk. <laughs> so that that uh, poor St. Louis is ticking away. His hit point pool is just slowly but surely dying. We managed to escape getting shot at by this St. Louis. So we'll go ahead and we'll start to return the favor. Well, I guess he got one shell over before I disappeared and, and the guns automatically decided it was time to shoot at the island. Got ourselves an Izyaslav. He needs to see my Izyaslav, but look what he's doing. My video on Izyaslav. Tell you how to play. Um, 
He's definitely getting pretty aggressive there. But hey, look, another St. Louis that's on fire. <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, this the <laughs> Japanese cruisers seem to be no shortage of, uh, you know, ring of fire jokes. We do have some sort of destroyer that's in the middle here. I, I'm assuming it's that Isakaze, but I, I, you, you, it's hard to really tell. Oop, more incoming fire. Man, he took 561 hit points off. What a jerk. So the, the overall general tactics here, you definitely do not want to be presenting a flat broadside to any battleship that's paying attention to you. Another fire. Uh, that's just a recipe for getting citadel. Remember, the ship has really, really weak armor. I'm only, uh, you know, less than 100 millimeters of armor. Not enough to stop any battleship shells from finding their way thoroughly into... Ooh, our Izzyaslav got detonated. Um, definitely not enough armor to stop you from, you know... Ooh, rare double first blood. But definitely not enough armor to stop a... Battleship shell from, you know, penetrating deep into your citadel and causing you all sorts of hurt. Unfortunately, this also means that cruiser AP is just as effective at penetrating into your citadel. And, well, you gotta be angled with the ship. So, anything that's gonna be shooting AP at you, you definitely want to be angled. Destroyers, even destroyers, man, I would not risk getting shot at by a destroyer. Now, map tactics-wise here, you can see that I have I have transitioned back to the north side here, and that's because this battle is evolving pretty slowly at this point in time. I, I'm trying to engage this Isakaze that's here, but we got to pay attention to this Wyoming that's coming around. Whoop, started the Isakaze on fire. I really hope he didn't burn his damage control party on his engine that I took out earlier. <laughs> Shows up real briefly there and then disappears. He's he's out of the detection range. Quick shot at this Wyoming. It's kind of decision time. We we've we've got ourselves a battleship here. You know you can see kiting is not the strong suit of this ship. In fact, I would articulate that if you're kiting in this ship, um, you'd better know what you're doing and and not expose too much of a broadside when shooting those guns, especially if someone's shooting at you and focusing you down. I, I generally ended up pretty lucky in this in that most of the time I wasn't being shot at by ships, at least not until the later part of the game. And that, that helps out a lot, but the ship's strength is definitely in charging and not so much in kiting. Now, there are cruisers that do very good in kiting, German cruisers especially. Uh, Nuremberg is really quite effective at it. Tried to switch to AP here to... to get some hits on this Karlsruhe, but uh, he's going away. So that's not going to come out to be very beneficial. And you can see just overall accuracy, not super. <laughs> All right, well, we'll switch to the Dene because the Karlsruhe has disappeared behind an island like a jerk face. Actually, he disappeared into a smoke cloud like a jerk face. And long range AP fire, you know, 2000 damage with Three shell hits that actually did damage. Not too shabby. And down he goes. So we got ourselves a Dene. We definitely kill secured that. <coughs> uh, yeah, we'll call it kill securing. Uh, <laughs> for the team, we're down We're down a ship, so we definitely need to make up the difference here. In fact, we're down two destroyers and a battleship to only two cruisers on their part. Because the northern battle has uh, definitely ceased to be a battle, I'm going to kind of come back down here towards the middle and try and cut off this Isakaze from coming through the center here. And as well as doing that, I am also going to help with any of the ships that are within gun range. You know, there's that Wyoming that's over there somewhere. We've got the Karlsruhe. There's a Kuma floating around. Um, that Miyogi all the way up there, though, I'm going to ignore him because, quite honestly, he's not much of a threat up in that island chain. Dugue is coming our way. Oop, got ourselves a Kuma. All right, well we'll we'll slow down a little bit here, and we're gonna we're gonna engage him. And again, the the gun arcs on this ship are not nearly as good in reverse as they are in going forward, and so it, it it's really hard to to shoot at some of these ships at times without exposing huge broadsides. That's fine so long as you know where all the ships are at that are shooting at you. Again, worried primarily about that Wyoming, but you can see where he's at on the map. He's way up there. So helping out our southern force here. Again, launching torpedoes as an area of denial. 
Not so much because there's a valid target there. I still don't have any idea where that Isakaze is at. He's not popped up in the map, so that's kind of an issue. Uh, we got ourselves Mr. St. Louis here. I'm pretty sure he was one of the... Oh, see, there's the Isakaze in the middle. Those would have been good torpedo launches. Uh, I don't know where he ran off to, but... He's over there somewhere, so we know he's in the middle. He's probably going to try and push that area where I came through to try and go cap. And it looks like that's what he's doing. If our carrier can keep him spotted, I'd like to be able to duck around on this and, and uh, go catch him off guard. Well, for lack of a better phrase, off guard. I guess he's not really being caught off guard if he knows I'm coming. Looks like they've got an AFK ship. Okay, switching to the Degway. We've got ourselves that St. Louis is, is definitely uh, definitely running away. Yep, we're going to ping the Isaac. Ooh, we started the Degway on fire. Ah, nothing like French burning baguette. Uh, so that Isakaze is indeed going for our cap, and that's a problem that definitely needs to be addressed. So we're going to head back that way while simultaneously engaging other ships. Now, slight risk here of turning broadside to the St. Louis. Oop, another fire. <laughs> Poor Degue. This thing is just a fire starter. Eh? Well, as we're going to hear that a lot because Japanese cruisers. So again, St. Louis. Oh, he's got 178. Nope, he sank. Okay, so we don't get the kill on him. I would have thought we would have, but no. Do have uh, this Karlsruhe here that uh, we can engage. And hopefully we can finish him off before he gets around the island here. Ooh, apparently not enough of a lead. Very distracting with the sun there. Uh, one of the few aspects of this map that I don't care for. Very easy to lose your, your sighting there. Okay, so the Karlsruhe is now behind an island. Now it's time to switch to the next target, which is the Isakaze. I'm getting engaged by the Degue and the Wyoming. However, I don't think either one of them are really a concern at this point. I definitely need to address this Isakaze who is in our cap. He is by far the more threatening of these. One interesting thing of note is if you do charge straight ahead at a ship in this, you do have three guns that you can bring to bear. That's the two wing turrets and then the very front most turret. Unfortunately for me, we're kind of playing this transition from side to side game. A little bit of a, I guess we'll call it a panic torp launch. Yeah, only two of them made it through. Looks like we're going to be able to finish this guy off, though. Yep, and with the Hydro up, we spotted those torpedoes way early. Not an issue. Now we've got some other ships to target and finish off. Mr. Karlsruhe. You can see we're up to 74,297 damage with those two kills. I'm, I'm playing pretty conservatively here. I'm trying to do my best to flex across the map, but we're running out of support and help with this Wyoming, the Degue, the Karlsruhe, I definitely cannot charge into that mess. If it was just the Karlsruhe and the uh, Wyoming, I, I could probably hack it out and, and survive, but there's significant risk in doing so. As you can see, that Wyoming just lopped off a pretty healthy amount of hit points. Uh, the new, the new, I wish they wouldn't have changed my requesting help thing. Well, and unfortunately now we're burning and our repair is down. Well, it is what it is. We will continue our fight, but we're going to kite, which again is not the strong suit of this ship at all. And it looks like the carrier is going to help us out a little bit, but you can see here uh, using the rudder shift to really help out there, but lacking in gun range. See, we, we've actually managed to disappear entirely from the map without, um, while, we, while we still have our gun bloom all the way up. So... That's one That's one aspect of this ship that I think is a little bit more frustrating, especially since the gun arcs are so flat and usable that I, I definitely feel like it could use just a smidge more range, but the ship is so powerful. Um, I, I don't know that that buff would be justified in any way aside from just that quote-unquote quality of life buff. Well, our fire is finally out, and the Karlsruhe gets burned to death by our Langley. Yay for auto-dropped uh, dive bombers <laughs> and no low-tier AA. Awesome. We got Kuma. We got Wyoming. It looks like we pretty much forced all of these guys off, but, you know, in terms of points, we are ahead in points. I think one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So we're ahead in ships, but in overall count, you know, carrier, that's nice to have for spotting, but they've got two battleships to our one. 
Granted, one of them is way off in who knows what land. Looks like the carrier, hopefully he gets some torpedo hits there. Looks like he got two. That's good. Definitely uh, requesting support here to try and get and deal with this. I don't want to get super close to that Wyoming. You know, the key to playing cruisers it, uh, in a battleship oriented or uh, a battleship slanted game uh, is to, to definitely play at range because at range they're at a bigger disadvantage than we are Ooh, we're spotted I'm assuming that's by a Kuma by the Kuma uh, I guess it could be the Wyoming as well but uh, you definitely want to play at range because if he shoots at you you got more time and time and distance that really helps well distance is time as the phrase goes that just helps you... Oh, there's another fire. That really just helps, you know, you give you the opportunity to kick the rudder over and avoid the bulk of the damage. Sometimes that will come and help you. Sometimes it will really hurt you. Uh, it's, it's hard to honestly say one way or another. Up to 83,000 damage in a Tier 4. Oh, boy. All right, Frenchie. It's time for, it's time for more Burnt Brett Baguette. Oop, Miyogi firing at us. I guess it's finally time that we should go and address him, because if he stays around for too much longer, you know, that, that could be a bit of a problem. <laughs> I'm behind an island, so he's having a hard time really aiming. Good news for me is that I've got enough experience shooting over islands that's not too much of an issue. That Degway is burning. Typical French baguette. Oh, I guess he's not. He repaired it. What a jerk. Oh, well. We'll, we'll focus on burning ourselves some sushi, I guess. Uh, Mr. Miyogi... A little bit of a battle cruiser. He's in his stock hull configuration. That is a painful grind. Uh, it's really that ship really becomes quite solid once you get everything updated. Oh, took out my my steering and started me on fire. Ooh, he burned that repair party on one fire. Not the choice I would have made. That's all right. You know what this means? It means we're gonna burn him. <laughs> We're up to 12 fires and 92,000 damage. Two kill. There's another fire. 13 fires. Now, he's going around this island, so I, we've got a... Oop, high caliber. We've got a decision to make here. Now, me personally, I know I could probably take him head on, uh, especially with torpedoes. Personally, I'm going to err on the side of caution because we still... We're, we're ahead on points. We're ahead on... Uh, oop, took another hit. We're head on ships, but I really don't want to sacrifice myself needlessly. Now he's with seven point some odd range. You know what that means. Ah, he's slowing down. So he's actually playing the WASD game here. And that's kind of unusual for somebody in his uh, in his tier. It's it's fun to watch that on the, on the torpedo lead indicator because a lot of people don't realize that that tool is extremely helpful. It allows you to really determine when a ship is going to you know speed up slow down whether it's turning or not you can combine that with the map information to really get a good idea of what they're doing and and predict you know direction of travel and when to launch and all that so we've gone ahead and we've launched torpedoes here a little bit of a widespread he thought i was going to continue to come around the other side that's going to buy me a couple more seconds and start him on fire but look at this bait Oh man, this is this is something that I would expect in a Japanese destroyer. Yes, keep turning. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> well, he ate torpedoes from one direction, then he ate them promptly from the other. And a quick kick of the rudder, and he completely whiffed that. So, a little bit of a powerhouse uh, move there. Again, experience in, in this type of fight is really what's helping me out here versus him. Unfortunately for him, he's just playing against somebody who's been playing for a heck of a lot longer than he probably has. We're up to 118,685 damage, three kills. We've got ourselves high caliber. Be nice to get ourselves a uh, Confederate out of this as well, since high caliber and Confederate are both pretty solid uh, achievements to get. They give you lots of good flags. And we've got ourselves a Kuma up here. So this is a Kuma versus Kuma battle. He actually has just slightly less hit points than I do. But I've got one thing he doesn't. I've got the advantage of being able to pick and choose when this battle is going to occur. Now I choose to engage early. But you can see there that the bloom went down before... 
he spotted me. But we're going to continue to engage because he's basically broadside. If I can get a good solid hit in here, if I can find a citadel, it's going to hurt him a lot. And so we're kind of missing here. Now he's locked on targets. He knows he's not going to be able to fight that Wyoming in open waters. That's a smart move. He's, he's still shooting at him, mostly because I don't think he realizes that I'm here. And that AP is really kind of becoming ineffective. Ooh, 56 seconds left in the match. 119,000 damage in a tier 4. Back to HE. We're getting closer and closer to, to the Kuma here. And we're going to hopefully translate this in. There's Confederate. All right, so now it's time to, to convert this into... Uh, a little bit more aggressive play style because we've got the hit point advantage. We've got the fleet advantage. Apparently, we don't have the aiming advantage. <laughs> um, ah, he's locked on. Well, so the key to this battle is going to be timing yourself so that you are firing while he is reloading and you are maneuvering while his shells are inbound. Now, he, ooh, he's, yes, open up that broadside. It'll all be over soon. Ten seconds left in the match. Can we get the fourth kill? Yes! Citadel for the kill and win. So this is Kuma. Really enjoyed this ship a lot. I cannot lie. One thousand, uh, sorry, 121,933 damage. Four kills. Confederate high caliber. 1,732 base XP. 42,000 damage done between fires and floodings. 38 of that in fires. Anyway, I really enjoy Kuma. It's a fantastic ship in my book. As far as tier 4 cruisers go, she's pretty solid all the way around. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.